Today we're talking about binary, decimal, and hexadecimal number systems. And this is really a precursor to the next video, which is going to be about C-sharp uh, binary reader and binary writer. Probably one of a two or three videos, I suspect. But the whole idea of these different number systems is that they're a power series expansion that produces positionally meaningful numbers. And the radix of the number system in question is always the number of possible numbers in each of those positions. For instance, in the binary number system, the two possible numbers you have are 0 and 1. So it has a radix of 2. And in the decimal number systems, the 10 possible numbers you have are 0 through 9. So it has a radix of 10 the octal number system has the possible numbers of 0 through 7 so it has a radix of 8 and hexadecimal has a radix of 16 but I'll go into more detail later on how you represent 16 numbers in one slot the, uh, I'm actually going to introduce myself as I was three years ago in a, a sort of dissertation I did on, on binary and decimal and hexadecimal numbers. The main advantage of these types of number systems is using something like uh, Roman numerals to calculate is really hard. For instance, MCMXC plus XXII equals MMXII is really hard to do even though it means 1990 plus 22 equals 2012. A guy that's often attributed as being the father of the computer is Charles Babbage and he invented a design called the difference engine in the mid 1800s and it had two problems. For one thing it didn't have the technology to produce the gears, cams, rods, levers and springs to the precision needed to get it to run. And the other problem was it was based on a design on the decimal number system. And that makes it really complicated to work, although it's really beautiful to watch working. The 153 years after he, he failed to produce this engine in a working model, it was built in London in 2002. And it has uh, 8,000 parts, weighs in, five tons and measures 11 feet and as Babbage himself says another age must be the judge and at, they judged him at that point that yes it would work it's actually a little big to be a pocket calculator on however you know on the website uh, I got this from is I display at the bottom in the blue a, a lot of this material from but computers work best with simple switches on and off, 0 and 1, the binary number system, uh, which leads me to uh, introduce my old or paradoxically young self and that it's discussion on nature of binary numbers and the way things are saved on the computer, which I think is a useful thing to do in terms of understanding programming. So why don't we do that now? All that's really stored in the computer is zeros and ones. Everything you see, all the nice pictures, all the nice songs you hear played, and all the uh, you know fighting demons in your uh, video game are all just zeros and ones, amazingly. And in order to understand that, you really need to understand the essence of the problem again. And the essence of the problem really was going from something unusable like Roman numerals in terms of doing calculations to positional, positionally meaningful notations. And the way they did that was by a series of uh, uh, power base or radix to a power. So in, ca in the case of binary, the rix is 2 because you have two possible numbers in each position. You have a 0 or a 1. So 
the meaning of the first position is 2 to the 0 and anything to the 0 power is 1 and the uh, meaning of the second position is 2 to the 1 anything to the 1 power is itself so it's 2 and the meaning of the third position is 2 squared which 2 squared is 4 and the meaning of the third position since we're only looking at three positions we could go on forever is 2 to the third which is 8 so anything in this position needs to be multiplied times 2 to the 0 or 1 anything in this position needs to be multiplied times 2 to the 1 or 2 anything in this position needs to be multiplied to 2 to the 2 uh, which is 4 and anything in this position needs to be multiplied times 2 to the 3 so we have a 1 in this position we multiply it times 2 to the 3 and we get an 8 we have a 1 in this position and multiply it by a 2 to the 4 or 2 to the 2 we multiply it times 4 <laughs> which is 2 to the 2 and we get 4 so we have an 8 and a 4 then in the 2 position we have a 0 so we don't multiply it times anything or add it together and in the last position we have a 1 times 2 to the 0 which is 1 times 1 so we have a 1 so basically we have 8 plus 4 plus nothing plus 1 which becomes uh, 12 plus 1 13 so this is the binary representation of the number 13. There's lots of other uh, positionally meaningful number systems with different radixes. The one we all use is decimal and then there's hex which is to base 16 which is useful because it can totally represent these four bits in one number and in fact we don't go around using four bits much it's what's referred to as a nibble but if you put two nibbles together you have a byte that's the kind of meaningful terminology early programmers use <laughs> nibbles and bytes so uh, if we have all zeros that's also zero in decimal and also zero on hex if we have all zeros in a one that's one times two to the zero or 1 times 1 which is 1 and 1 in hex when we get past uh, 9 which is 1 0 0 1 in binary it's also 9 in decimal and 9 in hex but then something interesting happens we can we need two digits to represent it in in decimal now but we just need one digit in hex because it's base 16 so a 10 in hex is an A, an 11 in hex is a B, uh, 12 in hex is a C, a 13 in hex is a D, a 14 in hex is an E, and a 15 in hex is an F, as high as we can go with 4 bits. For an F in hex is 1111 in binary, or 15 in decimal. So some of you might be thinking, wow, that binary, that's a pretty cool way to do it. And not realize that you've been looking at this solution to this problem all your life using decimal. Because decimal does exactly the same thing. The first position in decimal is the radix of decimal, which you can have 10 possible numbers, 0 through 9. So the radix is 10. So you have 10 to the 0 and anything to the zero is a one. The tens position or ten to the one since anything to the one power is itself in the case of this number is two. I guess I'm gonna just keep talking while this dog is barking because he's apparently never gonna stop. Uh, the, the third position is the hundreds position because ten to the two is a hundred and the third position is the thousands position because 10 to the 3 is a thousand 
So when we do this progression, we see 3 times 1,000, which is 3,000. 4 times 100, which is 400. 2 times 10, which is 20. And 5 times 1, which is 5. So when we add these all together, we get 3,425. So this power series expansion we've been using all our life and probably most of us are totally unaware of it which I think is pretty cool makes you wonder how much else in life you're totally unaware of this brings me to uh, the hex dump which is a utility actually this specific utility is HXD which is both a hex viewer and a hex editor and you can get it for free if you just uh, type in HXD in Google and it'll take you to a site where you can download it. It's totally freeware. But if you look at the numbers along the top, these are hex numbers uh, 0 through F. And then these numbers are hex numbers that go on as far as the file is along. And basically to find a specific hex offset into the file of these bytes, you take uh, for instance 1 for hex 10 and if you wanted to find this number here it'd be 1 and then A so 1A is the offset of that number and you notice along the top it's all 2D's which is a series of dashes that I have at the top of the file it's a file describing uh, shortcut keys for VLC another great program and if at this point there's two characters that can't display so they just show them as dots and that's 0D and 0A and DA is the um, code for uh, carriage return and line feed and this is the way Windows does a new line if you go into Unix a new line is just 0A so that actually causes a problem with displaying Unix files on Windows. I, I wrote a utility for translating between the two in order to overcome that. But the address of this carriage return line feed would be D and 4. So it would be 4D would be the hex offset if you wanted to get this value using say a C sharp program. And I'll be doing a lot of hex dump type uh, programming or hex dump looking at the output of programs in the following videos where I'm talking about binary reader and binary writer. So both this and the polymorphism video before this one are sort of preparing you for the binary reader and binary writer videos where I actively use this in C sharp. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.